Hey guys, thanks for watching another movie review here at Cinematics. I'm your host, Jordan Ross, and today I'm talking about Split. Now, I am going to mention some spoilers, but that'll be at the end of the video, and I'll give you a heads up so you can turn it off in case you haven't seen it and don't want anything spoiled. But the rest of the video is spoiler-free, so you don't have anything to worry about. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. M. Night Shyamalan is back. His last film, The Visit, wasn't great, but it was still a solid step in the right direction, especially after five really big disappointments in a row. However, Split proved that The Visit wasn't a fluke, because this is easily his best film since Signs. By the way, in case you wanted to feel old, Signs came out 15 years ago now. Anyway, in this film, James McAvoy plays Kevin, a young man with multiple personalities, 24 to be exact, and under the influence of some of his stronger personalities, he kidnaps three teenage girls and keeps them locked in a basement for some really sinister purposes, which you learn as the film goes on. And McAvoy gives a really great performance in this, or should I say performances. It's hard enough for an actor to envelop himself in one role, much less eight, which is the number of personalities we actually see him portray in this film. Not only that, but there are moments where he switches back and forth between personalities in an instant, and he pulls off the transition seamlessly, which is really, really difficult to do. Patricia and Dennis are very unstable. I'm not Dennis. Have you both taken charge now? Please believe me. I'm Barry. Having said that, I feel like 24 personalities is a little bit of an overkill. I think four or five would have been more than enough. And I can't help but imagine the pitch for this movie went something like this. Hey M. Night, I was watching Psycho and I had a really cool idea for a movie. What if Norman Bates had multiple personalities instead of just one? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's give him 10. Actually, I was thinking more like four, maybe five. No, 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 15. You don't, you don't think that's too many? I got it, 24. Seriously though, 24 personalities is way too much, and we don't even get to see all of them. We don't even get to see half of them. And you know, maybe they're trying to hold some out for a potential sequel, but even then, 24 is just way too much in my opinion. That's that's always really been kind of M. Night Shyamalan's downfall, is that he's too ambitious for his own good, and he often gets in over his head or bites off more than he can chew. And, and that definitely happens at times in Split. However, it's still an intriguing concept, and it's elevated by a really ominous tone created by Shyamalan and the cinematographer from It Follows. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, so you can look him up if you want to. But the thing that really sells this film are the strong performances. I already mentioned James McAvoy, but Anya Taylor-Joy and Betty Buckley were both really strong in this as well, and each of them had really good chemistry with McAvoy. And I was glad to see Betty Buckley have a chance to redeem herself from the happening. Planning on stealing something? No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep? What? No! Split isn't on the same level as The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable or Signs, but it's a refreshing improvement from what we've come to expect from M. Night Shyamalan, who is a really talented but super inconsistent filmmaker. So I give it seven and a half stars. Like any M. Night Shyamalan movie, this film features an insane twist that needs to be talked about. So if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want it spoiled, stop watching now. I'll give you a few moments. I'm back. So Split is mostly satisfying and successful as a straightforward thriller, but the twist at the end reveals that it's so much more than that. So basically the film ends with Anya Taylor-Joy's character escaping from Kevin and Kevin just kind of being out on the loose. Right after the credits start rolling, it cuts to a scene in a diner and there's just a bunch of people sitting in there watching the news and a news anchor is talking about how Kevin, this man with multiple personalities who helped these girls captive, is missing. And as you're watching the reactions of the customers in the diner, one woman tries to recall a man that she saw on the news a while ago that kind of reminds her of this situation. And she asks her friend, like, oh, what was that guy's name again? And then the camera pans to the side, and you see Bruce Willis sitting next to her, reprising his role from Unbreakable, and he nonchalantly tells her, Mr. Glass, and then walks out. So this whole movie was a sequel to Unbreakable, which presumably is setting up a third film that will feature Bruce Willis going up against James McAvoy's character. It's a really cool way they did it, because just like Unbreakable explored the origins of a more grounded superhero, Split explores the origins of a more grounded supervillain. And it's fitting that Split reminded me of Tin Cloverfield Lane, before I even saw the twist because both films are about people being held captive in a basement by a crazy person, but then after the twist is revealed, 
you realize that that's not all these two films have in common. They're both secret sequels to other films. However, Split didn't reveal it's a sequel to Unbreakable until the film was released in theaters to let audiences experience it themselves. With Tin Cloverfield Lane, they revealed it in the trailer and with the title of the movie, so you knew it going into it. I really liked Tin Cloverfield Lane. I even liked it more than Split, but I wish that they would have taken the same approach as Split and, you know, kept any references to Cloverfield out of the marketing campaign and just let us realize it for ourselves while we're sitting there in the theater because I feel like that's so much more satisfying and has a way bigger effect on the audience. But yeah, so Split just got me so excited because I've always really, really loved Unbreakable. I think it's one of the most underrated superhero movies ever made, and I always thought it really deserved a sequel, and Pat Oswalt has talked about a sequel. He even pitched it. M. Night Shyamalan has talked about wanting to do a sequel, so I'm so glad they're getting around to doing that now, and they're building this universe that's really, really exciting. And like I said, I liked Split as just a straightforward thriller, but those final seconds of the movie gave me an even greater appreciation for it. So yeah, I'm really excited to see future installments of this new franchise and, uh, and for the resurgence of M. Night Shyamalan. Have you seen Split yet? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments section. Also, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on all of our social media accounts. Thanks so much for watching this movie review. Until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross. Mm -hmm.